This is the Obspot Tail 2. And it's not just another PTZ camera. No, this one's got an added R, PTZR, and that's rotation. We'll get into that a little bit later because it's actually quite clever. Now, I've been using this for the past month on my own videos, and you may have seen some tracking shots in my other content where I've been using it. I've been putting it through its paces, and now I can let you know what I really think. Obspot did send this over for review, but as always, you'll get my honest take. Some bits I really loved, others, you know, not quite so much. So let's take a closer look. Hello, and welcome to the Worldly Bloke channel. I reviewed a few Obspot cameras last year. The Tiny2 webcam and a couple of their original Taylor PTZ cameras. This Tiny2 is really just a glorified pan and tilt webcam. It's still very good though. While the tail airs are much more capable AI powered PTZ cameras. They're still small enough to throw in a bag, but with proper connectivity like HDMI, USB and NDI. And on paper, they were quite good, but in practice, they were a little bit clunky to use. Mind you, I've been using them on and off since then, both here in the workshop and out in the field. This tail too, though, is a whole different beast. It's bigger, heavier, and much more serious. If you compare it side to side with the Tiny2 PTZ webcam, you get the scale of things. With this, you're getting full size HDMI 2.0, a three gig SDI, NDI, HX3, USB-C down here. So you've got USB-C power and USB-C data. You don't need to use it on the same cable. There's a one gig LAN port with power over ethernet. And yes, a built-in battery that lasts for absolutely ages. It is beautifully made with the look and feel of a proper high-end camera. Almost feels like a piece of studio equipment. Well, to be fair, it is a piece of studio equipment. Physically, it's about three times heavier than the tail air. It's just over one kilo, but it's still very portable, but definitely more substantial. No travel case this time, which is a bit of a shame at this price point. Mine arrived in a foam cutout box, which was rather nice, which I'll probably repurpose into a proper carry case when I build a mobile kit. Let's get into the tacky bits. Inside here, there's a 1 over 1.5 inch CMOS sensor, which is larger than the original tail airs 1 over 1.8. And that gives you better low light performance, more dynamic range and less noise overall. Technically, it's a 50 megapixel sensor, but don't get too excited. It's mostly used for zoom and reframing you're getting a five times optical zoom. You can see the lenses in here and up to 12 times hybrid zoom with a bit of digital magic all layered in to make it work very nicely. Aperture wise, it's an F 1.8 on the wide end, narrowing down to F 3.0 at full zoom. So yes, you lose a bit of light when it's zoomed in. In terms of video output, you've got 4K60 via the HDMI 2.0, 1080p60 over SDI, which is only 3G, not 12G, unfortunately, and NDI HX3 over your network. Now, NDI is brilliant if you want to keep your rig free of cables. I showed this off in my tail air review last year. But just so you know, the NDI license does cost extra. It's not included. And honestly, at this price, it really should be. Power options are nice and very flexible. You've got USB-C down here. You've got power over internet or the internal battery, which really does give you a long runtime of around about five hours. And that's a realistic time from my tests. As for audio, you've got both mic in and line in via 3.5 inch jack. So there's plenty of options there, but there's no internal mic. For me, that's no big issue at all. 
Well, let me see if I can demo the rotational part of this. You can see all the beautiful lenses in there that give you the five times optical zoom. If I just power this on, there we go. It's going through its sequence. It should come alive. And if we look in here, hopefully you can see that as I rotate, the lens is rotating as well. Well, it's staying level, which is great. It's a bit like a, a full sort of gimbal. And to be honest, when I've been using this on a tripod and walking around, it actually does steady things out quite nicely. It's probably a bit awkward to use a full gimbal because it's quite heavy. Maybe you need a pistol grip underneath or something that might work, but it really is quite clever. It doesn't matter whether you've got your tripod level or not. The image will still just stay level. Very nice. So let's talk AI, because this is where the tail two really starts to impress. It's now running auto tracking 2.0 and it can track people, animals and objects over 200 categories, apparently, which I'll demo a little bit later. And the tracking, well, it just works. Step off camera, come back and it snaps back straight onto you. Even if you duck behind a wall or some bushes or something, reacquisition is very quick. Genuinely, some of the best subject tracking I've seen on a camera like this. You can even track groups now with a primary subject kept centered while the others stay in frame. So it's brilliant for shoots with more than one person in the mix. Although I did manage to fool it some of the time. So let's do a quick test and see how well this copes with me just walking around the workshop. Let me just select my ugly mug. There we go, a bit weird. Okay, that seems to be working. So follow me over here and see how we get on. Well, it seems to be following me okay. There's no lights on in here, so it's a little bit dark over here. And let's go over to the 3D printer and power supply testing area and over behind the bookshelves. Does it require? It seems to. Seems to be pretty good. Well, let's turn the auto zoom feature on. Go down here, auto close up. Let's see what that does. So, follows me quite nicely. I've got it set to medium speed, which seems to be not too jerky, which is quite nice. It feels fairly natural. Let's go over this way, back over to this corner, it's following me quite nicely, and duck behind the bookshelves. Hello, it's found me. The speed that it reacquires is really quite impressive. I've taken a lot of footage with the Tail 2, so here's a selection of what I've done over the last few months. This is my local sailing club. It's a very nice day, and I've got this set to auto zoom or auto close up on AI. And you can see this is at its maximum zoom of 12 times. And this gives you some idea of the quality of pictures that you can get with a mixture of optical zoom and digital zoom. What I'm trying to see here is how well the tracking is working and how well it maintains the lock on the subject that it's actually tracking. It's doing a pretty good job, although the dinghy is a slow moving object and we've got another dinghy moving behind it. What's going to happen? Well, it just changes the frame a little bit as the other dinghy passes behind it and then forgets it and reframes back to where it was in the first place. This is just another part of me trying to capture how well it would differentiate between different objects. It's all very nice. The reframing is automated, so it's not going to be as good as you might get if you were doing it yourself manually. Now, this is a tough test. This is at a local dog training center where I was doing a marketing video. 
I've got the object tracking set on this Labrador in the middle and I want to see how well it ignores all the other dogs and people walking around. I've got this set to auto framing again or close up and it seems to be doing a pretty good job. Now this was the first piece of footage that I took with the camera while I was out doing some FPV flying. I wanted to see how well it would track traffic running across this bridge. The traffic is moving around 30 to 40 miles an hour and I didn't capture the app screen so you can't see the tracking information on the phone. And this van was obviously going quite a bit faster so it's struggling to keep in the frame. I think if I'd set it to fast track it, it would have framed a lot better. Now while I was over here, I noticed, and if you look right in the distance, there's some people walking their dogs. It's a good couple of hundred meters away, and I wondered how well it would track it. And you can see how far this is zoomed in. It's quite a distance. I had the tracking on the people to start with and then repositioned it to be on one of the dogs. I couldn't see quite which one because it's too far away, but it looks like it's the one in the middle. So let's see what it does. Well, it stays locked on the dog, quite impressive. Now this was some work I did at night in my town down by the quay. It's about 10 o'clock at night. It's pretty dark and there's clearly some noise in the image, particularly when it's panning. I created two preset points and set it to auto pan between the two positions. It really is a very nice smooth pan. Back in the field again and I thought I'd just wander around and just see how well it tracked me. This is the sort of scenario you might want when you're out filming by yourself. This is with the auto close up turned off. but just about here, I set it to auto close up. There we go, and it seems to be following me. The framing is actually pretty good. Again, I had this set to medium tracking speed, not fast or crazy. And I decided to see how well it would cope with me disappearing down behind these bushes and how well it would reacquire the tracking when I came back out again. hasn't picked me up yet yeah it's got me now and that's done a reframe I wanted to see if I could track a drone flying which would be very useful for me the tracking is locked onto it while it's on the ground now it's moving around fairly quickly and it is pretty breezy it's quite a big drone so it's given up and it just loses it so that's another go there's no GPS on this drone, I'm flying it manually on quite a breezy day, so it's difficult to keep it in one position, especially since this was zoomed in. It's tracking it around reasonably well, but it just can't keep up and loses it. Now, if I turn off close up and give it another go, it's actually doing a much better job. And it's because there's more leeway. There's more area around the subject that it's tracking to actually give it half a chance to actually do the things it should be doing and keeping it framed. It's an interesting test, a bit of a torture test to be honest, but I think it actually shows the capability of the tracking, which I still think is rather good. Now, of course, not everything's perfect. The software and the app still feel a little bit clunky with connection issues here and there, but that feels like something a firmware update will address. And once again, I'll say it, the NDI license should really be included at this sort of price. And if I'm using this for a shoot, I'll be sticking to wired HDMI or NDI. The Wi-Fi is still a little bit flaky for a live stream where you're being paid and you want to keep the client happy and the stream alive. I'd also like to see a longer zoom on the next version. Something like 20 times would be brilliant for larger venues. And surely a carry case should be standard, not just a box. As it stands, 
the tail too will just flop around in your bag with no lens protection at all. But the Obspot Tail 2 is easily the most advanced PTZR camera that I've used at this sort of price and size. The AI tracking is fantastic, the optics are solid, power options are flexible, and the rotation feature is properly clever. If you're into live streaming, content creation, or running hybrid events with a small crew or even solo, this is a proper little powerhouse. And if you stick a couple of these either side of a stage for a gig or a live event, you've basically got yourself a multicam setup that you can manage on your own. Plus maybe a roaming handheld on a gimbal if it's needed. There's a lot of exciting potential here. Now, if you're thinking about adding one of these to your setup, I've dropped links below. And if you've made it this far, a massive thanks. But do let me know what you think of this new PTZR camera in the comments. And if you've got any questions, I'll do my best to help. And if you enjoyed the video or found it useful, give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.